Hey everyone, it's Adelaide Winterstep slash Valencia Stables, and today is going to be all about Star Stable Online. From places to races, quests, clothes, fun stuff, horses, updates, and more, you guys will get to learn everything about Star Stable. Whether you are just investigating Star Stable or new to Star Stable, I recommend that you watch all throughout this video, and by the end, I'm sure that you'll know a lot more about this awesome game. So first we have to know what exactly Star Stable is. Star Stable is a virtual horse game with a focal point of horses. It also is, has over 70 servers of all over worldwide players, over a million players in total. Through completing quests, you can gain reputation with factions, unlocking horses, clothes, races, and more. So it's a pretty fun game and almost endless. In this video, we're going to be looking at a bunch of different things to get you started on your journey with Star Stable and let you know a little more about it before you purchase the full lifetime membership. So let's get into it. So today, our tour guides will be our very own Adelaide Winterstep and Emerald Potential, my chestnut mayor. We're going to start off a little bit with the storyline of Jorvik. The story simply goes for Jorvik that it was once a cold and lifeless place. Then a young girl came, sprang forth, and helped bring it back to life. People manifested in the area and it became covered with horses, but there's still a dark power called Garnok hidden below it. The keepers of Aiden fight to keep the land protected and safe from the power of Garnok, but in case of emergency, a group of soul riders must join together to fight off the power. I, let's just consider that I might be part of that soul rider pack, or you if you're playing as these. Now that we know the storyline, it's time for us to check out some of the places and I'll give you a little tour of Star Stable. This is the entire map of Jorvik itself. All the areas in Shaded Grey still have not been unlocked, and there are so many areas to discover. That's right, this entire list. So, that's we have this entire area. I have four different areas that I like to consider continents or so-called. We have Silverglade, Mistfall, South Hoof Peninsula, and Harvest Counties. Inside that you have countries such as Cape West Fishing Village, Valley of the Hidden Dinosaur, Fir Grove, Valedale, Silverglade Village, and of course the very own New Hillcrest. We will be researching into all these areas, but I will mostly be bringing you throughout the halves of each of the continents. We're going to be starting off in the Golden Hills Valley area and connect down throughout the main part of Silverglade. We start in the beautiful area of Golden Hills Valley. It's mostly known for its beautiful leaves and almost being fall all of the time. It's a smaller area that you'll unlock about level 14 to 15, although I unlocked mine about level 18 depending on the quest that you do to get here. The main areas include Jasper's Pumpkin Farm, which is owned by a very old guy that lives right by the gate of Golden Hills Valley itself and owns this nice little pumpkin farm. Cape West Fishing Village, which is literally a village located on the water. It is so cute, and it's also home to the very popular horse market hosted by Eddie and Ferdinand. It's got a bunch of docks and also has the ferry, which is super cool if you're looking to travel here from Fort Pinta or another area that has the ferry. There's a lot of charm in this city and I can see why someone might want to move here because their houses are so cute in color and there's a bunch of cute shops nearby. And last but certainly not least, the Golden Leaf Stables. They're absolutely gorgeous with a red barn, even a red trailer, as well as a nice little jumping arena and a cross country course. I can understand why someone would want to move here because the beaches have adorable sunsets as well. The next area is what I call the Silverglade Vineyard area. The Silverglade Vineyard area is located up here. It's right by the Golden Hills Valley area, but it's just general area up here. We'll later explore the lower areas of Silverglade, including the other Valedale and Firgrove areas, but we're going to start off a little bit over here. At the base of this area is the very popular riding hall, which has a jumping and dressage area, and then I use for most of my filming. Of course, there's the actual Silverglade Manor, thanks to the title that you can see there. This is the actual place. We have the Baroness standing at the front with vineyards everywhere, including the actual wine cellar up there and the stable up there. There's cross-country areas, jumping areas, free areas, past areas. This is a pretty luxurious area. There's even a restaurant on top of that building that you can go up to. 
Below all of this is Marley's Stable. This again is a very popular place. We have the Hunter Arena, a barrel racing area, and an entire cell area full of paint horses as well as Mustangs if you go on farther. This is a big area for most of the Western horses and it has a couple of really cute shops as well. This is where most people buy their horses since they have a really nice selection of them. We have now hit the main Silverglade Village, which is next to Marley's. It is pretty big and a huge hangout area for a lot of people. Behind us you can see the Silverglade Castle, the Clock Tower, and some pretty famous areas that you might use in a lot of quests. There are even shops that you can go inside. The last area of this lower or higher Silverglade area is of course Steve's Farm. No one could go without mentioning this area. If I were on in a busier time, there would be around 30 to 40 horses in this area if it all loaded in. Everyone hangs out here, everyone chats here, but right now it's pretty quiet, which is really nice. We are now starting to get into the lower Silverglade area. This area includes Moorland and Fort Pinto, which are major areas for quests. You'll get to see some of the cool stuff that goes down here, but this is also a really fun area for those beginner players that haven't yet unlocked anything. These are the two areas that they can go to if you are not a star rider. Moreland is where you will start your entire journey. It's super cute. It's got a lot of cute areas. It's even got a bunch of little arenas in the back and a bunch of races that you get to unlock here. It's pretty magical and as you can see there are a lot of players that have just started riding right here in the center of Yorvik. This is Fort Pinta, a big hangout for those that don't have star ridership membership yet. And it's a super cute area, it's pretty relaxing and really chill, and it's got some nice buildings in it, a lot of shops, and disco on certain nights as well, especially this night, which is super cool. One of the main attractions here, though, is the beach, of course, which you can go into. There are restaurants and little areas to sit, and areas to hang out, and as you can see, all the way down there, there's a giant pool that you can go swimming around with a diving board. Something worth mentioning is the ferry area here in Fort Pinta. There are ferries that take off every so few minutes or so that can take you to new continents or so-called areas. As you can see, we're right here at the tip of what's so-called the iceberg. We will actually be visiting some of these areas here in a moment, but you could if you wanted to take a ferry to this area, this area here in Cape West Fishing Village, or even some areas in South Hoof here in the front. And I get the feeling they're going to be putting one also in Mistfall, so keep tuned for that. Now we've hit Veildale, which is the area of the Keepers of Aiden, basically the people that take care of us and protect us from Garnock. This entire area has cute little thatched roofs, cute little places, roses, little cafes, waterfalls, and more, and is even connected to Dino Valley, so we're going to go visit that too. Now we're going to be looking at the far side of Silverglade. This includes Dino Valley, Veildale, and Fir Grove, so let's get into it. This is Valley of the Hidden Dinosaur, a super icy place that actually slows down your horse. That's how cold this is. There's basically a huge area of really, really cold areas, which is forest and ice, and it's pretty cool. You get a lot of cool quests here, and there's also a lot of nice little campsites here, so if you want to check this area out once you unlock it, I recommend that. I won't be going in, though, because it practically looks the exact same once you get inside. The next area is sort of like in a little dome area of the Veildale Mountains, or Fergal Mountains, or Mountains of Jor, a lot of people call them, but um, there's a Veildale Lake here that's really cool and it's one of my favorite spots to hang out. They also have a nice cross-country race here and there's some trails that lead up into the mountains making it really really serene. The last area on this far side of Silverglade is obviously Fir Grove, which is one of my favorite areas and has stuck in my heart for a while. It recently got updated with green shingles and really cute little log cabins. It's got a lot of character and it's really worth checking out if this is going to be your first place to check out once you get Star Ridership. I believe that this and Veildale are both unlocked at about level 9, so make sure to go ahead and go for it because this is absolutely adorable. So now we are in this area, and I will be calling Pickup to bring me here. So this area is Mistful. I will be showing you just Dundle, and you can figure out the rest for yourself. You'll see a lot of videos of it. It just recently got released, but Dundle is the main city part of it, and the rest is mostly woods, forest, and the occasional cabin. 
This is Dundal in Mistfall. You can just notice the color tone and there's just random people walking around. There is a lot of stuff that Star Stable added into this. It's so detailed. There's forests and mists. During the night, the butterflies and the fireflies light up and fly around. We've got birds, we've got fish, we've got hedgehogs. We've even got little bunny rabbits jumping around. There's so much nature and wildlife. We've got frogs in the pond. And I mean, this is just beautiful. We've got people talking and so much to look at. It's Pra practically eye candy and there's a lot of new details that they added a lot of new infrastructure as well as their traditional fir grove houses with different coloring template but i really like this and it has become my home stable um which we'll talk about later in the video but it has become basically like my home ground for everything because it's so pretty okay so we've done this entire area including the valley of the hidden dinosaur or dino valley as a lot of people call it so we are now going to explore this entire area. We'll be starting around the Forgotten Fields area or around here and going down and through. And this is going to be a new form that I'm going to do this. I'm going to run through it because there's so much to see and um, there's a lot to do. So I'm going to be running through this entire area and talking you guys through a little tour of the entire Harvest Counties. It's a really exciting thing to unlock because you unlock it at level 16 and the Yorvik Stables part at about level 6. So let's get into it and you guys will get to see the beautiful Harvest Counties. So the ways to get to the Harvest Counties is you either have to take a ferry from Fort Pinta to either the south of Peninsula and cross from there, or take a ferry to Yarlheim and go through that area, or you can take the bridge from Moreland that you would have worked to make yourself and take it all the way there, or you can even cross here without having to go to a bridge. There's a lot of areas to cross. There's an area to little area that you can cross here to get to the Forgotten Fields and go through whatever you need. So there's a lot of options to go.
Okay, so we just did this entire area, which is crazy long, um, really long, like super duper long, and it hurts me inside. But yeah, so that's practically a tour of all of Yorvik. Now it's time to look at different races, quests, clothes, fun to do, horses, and there's still a lot more to do, but it'll be shorter than this, I swear. Now it's time to look a little bit at quests and how to do them and what you get out of them. Quests are little jobs that you have to do around the place to earn certain things, and there are different types of quests throughout. So we're going to use Steve as an example here. He has a blue exclamation point on top of this head. This means that he has a quest that I can do for money, maybe horse experience, horse experience points that helps him level up, and reputation with that faction. To clarify, a faction is a certain area, and gaining reputation with them allows you to unlock certain things, such as new clothes and maybe even more quests, which is honestly really helpful. For instance, for my Mistfall station, um, and for Dundle in general, which is the little city in Mistfall I showed you, um, I'm currently friendly, and there's a lot of different levels of reputation with these people. If Steve had a yellow exclamation point on his head, I could get all the things that I get with a blue exclamation point, but I could also get Rider XP. You see, horses get XP to level up all the way up until the level of 15, whereas riders get XP to level up whenever they need be. I'm currently level 20 for my rider and level 4 for my horse. The horse XP is shown here, and the rider XP is shown down here. The blue exclamation point quest can be done every day, whereas the yellow ones can only be done once in the entire game, which is a pretty cool thing. We're going to use Toby Larson as an example for the little information sign. A lot of people have these little information on top of their head, and that's to give you info about something. Toby Larson gives me tips about horse riding, whereas another person might give me ideas on how to find spirit. So now that you know what quests are, you might also learn that quests can be races. So here I can click on this race, talk to him a little bit, and I have the opportunity to earn Yorvik shillings, which is our money currency, but I cannot get my rider XP because that's only for yellow exclamation points. But I can get horse XP and I can get reputation. So let's give it a go. Once you say yes, you have three seconds until the race starts, and you have a lot of races that you can do. In total, I have like about 30 to 40 races a day that I can do to help level up my horse. The higher the, your horse gets on a level, the faster they become, the more agile they become. So it's really helpful to level up your horse so you can get better times in these races. You'll compete with a lot of other people to get better times, and I'll show you that after this race. But you'll complete these races. This one's Steve's race, and it gives me 250 horse XP, which is really helpful. Some races only give 125 XP, but this one gives 250, which is pretty nice, honestly. It's really great. Some of these races can be simple. Some of them take, like, two seconds to learn, and others take a while. There are some races that I've had to do 20 times in a row before I could get them, such as the Fir Grove races are very difficult to learn and master, but if you can get it down, you can get some really good times on it. It used to be my best race, and I used to always place in that, but now I don't because there's so much competition on these servers. Over the past two years, it's really, really grown. So as you can see, I'm about to come to the end of this race, and I'll show you a little bit about what you get. So after this race, it tells me my score up here in the corner, which is really helpful to know. Once I see this score, I can compare it to the other scores of the day. Dakota Dusk Hurricane is in first right now, and she got a 1 minute 1 second, 1 minute 1 second 0 0.05, whereas I got 1 minute 10 seconds. So I'm pretty far behind some of these people. I didn't even make it on the top 20. You can look at yesterday's records, this week's records, last week's records, this month's records, last month's records, and the best ever, which is under a one minute, which is crazy. You can also label it by checking to list for only friends. After a race, he'll have a green exclamation point over his head that you'll click on, and then he'll give you all of your rewards. Now, the reason that people compete for the best race time is not only for popularity, but also if every day you get first place, you get 100 Yorvik shillings. If you do this weekly and monthly, you get even more money on top of that. That's why a lot of people do this so they can get more money to buy more gear, and it's sort of like a consecutive cycle. So, we've now seen the different places 
quests and races. Now, what can you do with your clothes situation? So I'm going to show you what you can wear and what horses you can buy to improve yourself. To buy something, all you have to do is to go up to a shop like this until the shopping bag appears. Then you press on that. It'll bring you to a little menu where you can hover over the items and you can see your things change. So here if we hover over these boots, look at how my boots change. If you double click on that item, you can choose to purchase it with either Yorvik shillings or star coins, which you have to pay for star coins, but we'll talk about that later. For instance, though, I might choose to buy a hat and I can then wear that hat. If it went to my menu here, I can just double click it and I can wear it whenever I'd like. I even have a closet at my home stable because I do have a home stable that you can go inside and I can change out all my clothes because I have an entire wardrobe of clothes. Certain clothes give me better stats. For instance, I have this pair of pants. You might see that as I go over it, it gives me a list. Riding 4+, plus, jumping 5+, plus, command 3+. Plus. Tells me how much I can sell it for and what level I need to be to get it. So these certain pants, they have so much in riding, jumping, and command. So when I wear these clothes, it'll add that much to those stats. As you can see here, I've got riding, carrying, command, and jumping for my little person. My riding right now is 39, which is pretty so, so okay. The thing with this is that you can get different things added on. So all my clothes add to that stat. And the more riding I have, the faster I am. The more caring I have, the less my horse has to be cared for. The more command I have, the more my horse, the faster my horse turns. The more jumping I have, the higher my horse jumps. So all of these things can make you into a faster racer. Next, you can choose to purchase a horse. There are about 200 different horses on Star Stable. Some of them have similar colors or similar body shapes, but they're still all very unique in their very own way. For instance, how to purchase one is you go up to a horse with a little coin significance on top of its head, and you press the little money. So now it'll give me a description, how much it already starts off with. By the way, horses do indeed also have different stats. And how much it costs. Again, it costs star coins to buy horses and not just your Vic shillings, which are the other currency that you get for races. And that's right, horses can change clothes as well. They have a whole other set of stats, including strength, swiftness, agility, and much, much more. So it's really important that you also play around with those to see what works best for your horse. I can do it the same way I changed my human's clothes, just double clicking on things. And it's really easy and really fun, and you can make a bunch of different outfits. It's important to know that Star Stable updates every single Wednesday, and that's mostly why I chose this game, because it updates so often. That means you can get new horses, new clothes, and so many more things, including new quests and new races. That makes it really fun and it changes it up. Most recently, we had some new Connemaras, which is a little breed of pony, come by, and it was pretty cute. They're really, really adorable. If you're looking for a site that shows you everything, type in Star Stable Database. Star Stable Database shows you all of the horse breeds, all of the clothing, and what you can pair everything together, find out all the stats. It's awesome. You can look at everything that Star Stable has to offer. There are thousands of pages of clothing for Star Stable, so it's really, really fun to shop through that. Last but not least, we're going to look at some fun, fun things to do if you are in Star Stable. So I'm going to do a quick outfit change, and we'll start listing off a bunch of fun things to do in Star Stable. You can go horse shopping. It's my favorite thing to do, and you can look at all the different breeds, including the Hanoverians, Andalusians, and Aquatiques. It's really, really cool, and there are so many different colors and options to choose from. I mean, even look at these Pentavians. They're so pretty. Just look at all the color choices. This is just one store, and there's so many shops filled with different horse breeds. You can care for your horse at a home stable. These home stables are the major stables in each little area. For instance, you usually receive a My Brush, a My Hoof Pick, and some water buckets as well as some hay. All of these you can drag to your horse and you will do the action. For instance, right now I'm just brushing my horse. If you do this every day, your horse's mood will go up and they'll be faster. And the better their mood is, the more their mood will go up. Now, I don't take care of all my horses every day, so they're all in a really bad mood. But it's really nice to occasionally take care of them and feed and water them if you want to have a little bit of fun and pass the time. I also do this a lot before championships, too. 
Talking about championships, you go to a championship during a certain time and that will be in the corner of your screen. It'll tell you the times, how many minutes you have until the next championship. You wait for the countdown and you race against other people to win ribbons that you can later sell for a bunch of money. You go for a trail ride, which is really fun with all the trails around Fir Grove, Vaildale, and Mistfall. You could go to Steve's farm and socialize with other people that are currently on the game. You could get yourself a new haircut if that's what floats your boat for your horse. Or you could get a haircut for yourself. You could find a nice view and a nice sunset to go ahead and stargaze or look at birds. I mean, bird watching is fun, right guys? You could go sledding by running towards an edge and pressing X before you drop. Although a lot of times you'll die, it's really, really fun to fall off the side of a wall. You can go shopping at the mall located at the Yorvik City Plaza by taking a bus at Fort Pinta. Talk about the mall on Thursdays, every hour past the 20 mark, Raptor will show up here on the stage and he'll start singing. He even has an entire playlist, which is pretty fun to listen to. You can even get your hair done at the hairstylist and try out some new hairstyles at the mall since there are so many different stores. Or even go off the diving board. It's honestly really fun to go deep wading inside some of the Fort Pinta Beach pools. You can enjoy relaxing at a beach chair at the Fort Pinta Beach or even enjoy a relaxing layout on a towel. You can even enjoy a drink at local cafes if you want, and you can order anything that you'd like. If none of that gets you excited, maybe a visit to the local pony market will do that for you. If ponies aren't your thing, take a trip to the Cape West Fishing Village port, where there's a horse market so big that you'll literally have to interchange all of the options since there are so many horse breeds. If none of this fluffs your feathers, then go ahead and head over to your home stable where you can try organizing some of your stuff since you might have so much clothing. Or try to see how many horses you can fit into a stall without making it look too crazy. Still bored? Dumpster dive. Try your hand at finding a couple of stars, although they might be very difficult to find. Once you find them, there's a lot that you can get out of it. Like this one in Mistfall is literally at the bottom of a lake, which is pretty crazy, and it takes a fish to, for you to be able to get it. If you can get to the top of Fergrove Peak, you can sled down the entire side of it. Start by running and then press X as you're about to go down. You'll start to sled, which is honestly really fun and passes time really quickly. I like to do this before the Fur Grove Championship in case I get really bored. And sometimes you do die if you try to go down, but if you can make it down, it's really fun. Else, fouls, I recommend going to the disco and dancing the night away on Friday and Saturday nights um, from during the evening at around 5.30 all the way up to midnight or so. much everyone for watching this video this was the beginner's guide to star stable if you do choose to purchase star stable after watching this make sure to do a one month subscription remember subscriptions only stop and they continue to make you pay until you purposely delete them so make sure that you check up on your subscription after a month or so to make sure you're not paying double of what you want to um, or that it redoes your subscription if you don't want it to also i recommend buying lifetime if you know you're going to do it for more than a year buy star coins online only on double star coin weekends so you get double the star coins for the money that you're paying and just remember to have fun with the game it's a really fun game and i definitely recommend downloading it it's definitely the best investment for horse games so thank you so much for watching and see you guys next time